Hello, I'm Sol. I am a World of Warcraft content creator. I've been doing it for about seven years now, and I've been playing WoW for about 19 years. 19 years, we were still on the original Xbox and PlayStation 2 back then. I'm asked on a regular basis if now happens to be a good time to jump into the game or to return after a really long break. I mean, after all, it's, it's really old compared to the truckload of games that's been releasing in recent years. It's always a tough question to answer because I, I don't know what you're looking for. I can't just blindly shill the game. But you know what? Even though I am very biased towards World of Warcraft, I can say that, you know, yeah, it is a great time to try out World of Warcraft if you're a returning player or if you've never played it at all. And it's because... Well, there's all these different versions to choose from these days. It, it's kind of crazy that like five years ago, there was only the one version of the game. And now we have multiple versions to suit your preferences from World of Warcraft's past and present. Meanwhile, the modern game is taking huge steps towards letting you play the way that you want. Now, maybe this sounds intimidating. I'm gonna help introduce you to what World of Warcraft is all about these days. And then you can decide for yourself if it's worth checking out. We're going to start kind of in order with the classic era of World of Warcraft, a recreation of WoW's releases that tries to stay fairly faithful to the original release. Right now it's on Wrath of the Lich King that was WoW's second expansion back in 2007 or so, with the re-release of the Cataclysm expansion to come sometime next year. So you can hop on board as if it was about 15 years ago and expect similar gameplay even though it's filled with today's players and skill level. It's a great spot to jump into for the nostalgia or if you just want to get an idea of how World of Warcraft played back then. The current hotness though are some of Classic's newer game modes and we're going to start with Hardcore. It's basically the original release of World of Warcraft, no expansions, no nothing, with a few changes in the rule set. Most importantly, if you die once, that's it. You're done, you re-roll, you start over. It's, it's not for everyone. Like me, for example, I hate feeling like the investment that I put into my character is at risk of being lost forever because, I don't know, I got ambushed by a pack of mobs or I took a wrong turn and fell off a cliff. But at the same time, the idea of being in this big persistent world full of players who are dropping like flies all around you, I bet that by the time you get to max level, you've got all sorts of stories to tell of close calls and near-death experiences, uh, times when someone else died when it really should have been you. There's also an ongoing PvP scene because when you duel in this hardcore mode, it too ends with permadeath. Now personally, I'd rather be a spectator than a participant, although knowing that your skill and your luck, it ended hours of someone else's efforts at developing their character, kind of brings a certain thrill, right? Now, even though Hardcore isn't for me, I think it's one of WoW's strongest offerings right now because it's such a departure from traditional World of Warcraft or MMO gameplay, because you can die, and when you do, it's over. When a bunch of folks who don't know each other happen to be exploring a cave together, if things go sideways, yeah, you could let that one person die, but the situation could easily snowball and you might get caught up in it. It makes that sense of community feel natural, where in the other versions of WoW, death is just more or less an inconvenience. Now, that doesn't make hardcore better or worse, just very different. Before we continue, it's time to thank the sponsor of today's video, Ridge, who make minimalist wallets and accessories that last. They've got a killer sale going on until December 20th with up to 30% off site-wide. Check out ridge.com slash soul and check out the 30 plus colors they've got available and their newest colors that come in a ceramic powder. Now they call it that, but to me, these are the colors of Bastion. Light, subtle colors that give it a vibe that's like a breath of fresh air until you slip it into your pocket and then it's just there now and they're easy to use and force you to stop holding crap in your wallet. They're air tag attachments to make sure you never ever lose it. And you can try these things out for 99 days. It's plenty of time to pick up one for the holidays and if they don't want it, they'll return it or keep it. Maybe that was your master plan. Also get a chance to win a massive bundle of product worth $4,000, no purchase necessary. So join the 3 million customers who've been enjoying these accessories. These are truly, truly awesome. Ridge.com slash soul sales and December 20th. There's another classic game mode called Season of Discovery, and that just released very recently. Once again, this takes place in WoW's original vanilla era, but with a few more twists. First is that the game is going to slowly open up, phase by phase. So right now, we're in phase 1, and the max level cap is 25. 
It keeps the players at this level banned, and so people are just hanging out in regions and dungeons that are at that level. There are also these runes, they're basically abilities that you can obtain, and many of these are not from Vanilla WoW, but they're from later expansions like Wrath of the Lich King, so it's kind of like bringing the future into the past, which is now the present, but well, whatever. And these abilities let classes do things that they can't do anywhere else, like a mage who's typically a damage dealer that can now heal, or a warlock also a caster class that can become a tank by turning into a demon. It's pretty great. Finding these runes is the big reason why this is called a season of discovery or, well, I guess you could ask around for a guide or a walkthrough. But the idea here is to add a little bit of spice to the gameplay, make that journey feel different and with the challenges to match. Right now, there's a level 25 raid when usually raids come at max level. And in later phases, we can expect more dungeons to farm and runes to find and raids to conquer. So I'd say dive into here if you want to get into like the current trending thing, the lower max level, it is a bit more welcoming. It doesn't feel like you're falling behind right now. There is no hardcore version, but there are regular and PvP servers for a bit more thrill, and it's a lot of fun. It's simple and easy to get into. Of course, I have to talk about the actual 19-year-old game that is the modern or the mainline or the retail version of World of Warcraft, choose your namesake. And I'll be taking more time talking about this because this is not the narrow or focused offering that is the classic era, but it's like all of World of Warcraft history the complete offering. And I'd say that the current expansion, Dragonflight, is the best that WoW has been in years. I admit that as a new player, getting into the story might be a little bit tough. Like, if you're brand new, you're gonna get sucked into one of the more recent expansions and then get pushed forward to the most current expansion. It's, it's sort of weird, but you can, of course, revisit the old expansion content if you choose, or hey, you can always play the classic era of realms instead. As you'd expect, after almost 20 years, today's World of Warcraft feels super different with all sorts of quality of life changes and enhancements. There are technical improvements. There are way more available races to play and classes to check out. There have been big changes though, especially with this current expansion. The most obvious one is that it's it's got a really, really big world with tall peaks and deep chasms. It's so deep that they pretty much put an underground zone and that's really big too. They had to create a whole new flying system to get through these areas, and to me, that's one of the biggest pluses in the game. This feeling of naturally flying through an open space, having to kind of monitor your speed, watch where you're going, and it really sets the mood once you land and you realize that you're on a pretty tiny part of the map. It's hard to not be entertained just flying around and checking out the world that they created in Dragonflight to their most recent expansion. And these days, with a core player base that is, I admit, getting older, with preferences that shift and evolve, the game has split itself off into a number of directions to suit these kind of emergent playstyles. Collection is huge in this game, whether it's pets, mounts, or outfits, and you can get them from all sorts of different activities like outdoor adventures and, of course, dungeons, PvP, and raids. Professions have have had a huge revamp with an emphasis on creating a reputation for yourself on the server, but players also enjoy accessibility, buying materials across the entire region. Dungeons can be as difficult or as easy as you want with a challenging time dungeon mode, while in an upcoming patch, players can go into dungeons by themselves with NPC companions to fill roles. Raids are still, of course, a premier part of the game, featuring big encounters with multiple difficulties. PvP has been rolling out more solo raided modes so people can show off without having to join as a group. And that's what the modern game has been embracing, these different kinds of players. One type that's very much into the group and community-oriented gameplay, another type who just wants to exist in this MMO space with the freedom to play how they like, and of course, everything in between. It's almost overwhelming, especially for the kind of gamer who sees everything there is to do and they're like, yeah, I'm gonna do all of it. I don't like telling folks how they should be playing, but I'm gonna leave one tip. Go ahead and let yourself get lost and immersed by the adventures that are being put in front of you. Just go in a direction and see where it goes and then let the next shiny thing lead you on. And WoW just had its next three expansions announced, with the first coming out in less than a year, with its features so far doubling down on the idea that instead of forcing people to play a certain way, just create gameplay experiences that everyone can feel satisfied with. The modern game is still just a part of the whole WoW experience, all under a single subscription and, well, an expansion box if you're playing what's current. For a game that's close to 20 years old, it's not doing so bad compared to other 20-year-old MMOs, and it's never been more inviting than it is right now. 
Now, those are my takes, and if you don't mind, like the video, share your thoughts, subscribe for more World of Warcraft coverage. Of course, catch me live on stream, and I'll catch you later. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy.